fitness industry. You and I have both been in various aspects of the fitness industry. Probably the uh, biggest difference in our backgrounds are that you come from a D1 athletics background in college, and I was never that good. I, you know, was I was a power lifter. I was a competitive power lifter for 10 years. I've always done this stuff on my own. Bill Starr coached me. I had a lot of good coaches, but I've never had the experience of being in um, an organized program like a D1 sport. Uh, you bring a completely different set of experiences to the fitness industry than I do, but we've both worked in gyms. Yeah. We both worked in the, in the fitness industry part of uh, the the things we do. Let's talk about a little bit about what is going on now because I sense that maybe an update is taking place from the Arthur Jones paradigm that was established back in the 70s that you and I started with. Yeah, you know I still think we have a, the, I still think we have an issue with with well we talked about philosophy but you know health is the interplay of the organs. That's Maffetone's. That's so you can be extremely right. healthy and not look and not, very good. And not look very good and not really be fit in the sense that you and I use the word. Yeah. Sure. And the fit fitness, you know, is the ability to do a task. And so what happened the problem with the fitness industry is that they went they and it's well it's it's like a hydra. You cut off one snake's head and two more. Mm -hmm. But it's exploded outward in so many directions, but it's still not addressing what people need. The task. It's not it, task oriented. Yeah, it's, it's so they have a formula for yeah, what works best yeah. in the in the room in which they're doing business. Sales. Yes. They can get you in and sell you. But then right. then after they sell you then everything just falls on the ground. Sure. And to be honest, I mean... Because that's the whole point. Yeah. The whole point is the front office. Yeah. Once the front office, once you're past the front office, it doesn't really matter to them what happens to you. They would rather you didn't come back. In fact, I've been told that. Because they got their dues line. Sure. Oh, I've I know been, that. I've been told that. I know that. So the problem, you've got a whole industry. It's, it's a capitalistic <clears> industry. And, okay, this is our system. I get it. But it fails miserably. And it's because it, do, it doesn't address the... When this person comes in, they they want th certain things, and the last thing we do is address those needs. The last thing we do is give them to them. Because if we do that, then they show up. Yeah, <clears throat> Clutter up the floor, all that sort of thing. Now, the industry is doing just fine, sales-wise, if that's their primary. But I, I have never operated my business from the standpoint of just sales, and that's why I've failed so miserably in the fitness, in the fitness yeah, industry. Too, yeah. I was broke, but I... But what we've done is a completely different approach than what they've done. We take everybody and we show them how to squat and all this other right. silly stuff that they can't do. They and it, can't physically get it done. And it's very time intensive. Right. Very time intensive. <clears throat> you know, uh, I work with people who've been doing personal training for, for years, and I'm fixing a personal trainer's issues. Well, they. In a, it, take, it might take me two hours to work with their squad, or mm -hmm. well, that, you know, it's too time intensive. <laughs> if they ever did a squad, but you got someone who's been lifting uh, on paper anywhere for six to twelve years, who has gross squatting issues, or you know, or throw, mm -hmm. throw, you know, right. whatever the, whatever it is, <clears throat> and so, but that's who. It's not a good way to make money. Now it's a good way to make you fitter. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can make you leaner. I can make your joints feel better. I can do. I can make you look better in a suit when you walk down the hall, but it's 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 too expensive. It's too expensive. Yeah. Twenty-four hour fitness can't hire you to work on their floor. They can't hire me at Gold's Gym to work on their floor. What they want is somebody they can hire for eight dollars an hour right. to put pins. So what it all boils down to is. What equipment do we have on this exercise floor that we can use for these people? That's Not right. what task is this person trying to solve with this program and then tailor for that. That's not the, we're yeah. here, okay? This is what we bought. Yeah. We got $300,000 invest in all of this shit on the floor and this is what we're going to use. Yeah. And that's their approach. It's well, backwards. And that was kind of the genius of the Nautilus places. I mean, you had uh, 11, 9, 11, 13 machines, kind of depends. And then you did, uh, you know, Eddie, had his name, that's how you knew, right? Trainer. Trainer, Eddie. Eddie. Trainer. 
And he, had, he said, oh, last time you did Clipboard. Q. Clipboard. Clipboard. Last time you did Q, today you're going to do R R. 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 And he went like this, and he said, okay, slow down, speed up, slow down, speed up. Okay, next machine, last time you're at seat position three. That's a good system. It's a very good system. You feel like you're getting personal training. You're going to be out of there in half an hour. Hey, it's programmed. Yeah. It's scientific. And it came with the equipment. And that's why Arthur Jones. Did you ever meet Arthur, by the way? No, I never did. I would. I never have either. I, I know a guy. I know a guy that was his veterinarian on that big crazy oh, farm okay. he had out in. With all the out in, uh, and Yeah, I know. I knew this guy. guy told me stories about it. Arthur was a was a. One of these insane, evil genius Lex yeah. Luthor kind of a guy with a 180 IQ, yeah. and he just was eight miles ahead of everybody else in the conversation, and was an absolute incredible genius, chain smoker, crazy person, but what an interesting guy yeah. he must have been. Oh my God, I'd love to have just had a conversation you know, with this in guy. This industry, they changed. I mean, you remember Jim's? Well. You and I got into this. Yeah. Oh, I remember. We're about the same. How old are you? You're 53. I'm 54. We got into this thing at about the time when Arthur Jones had just flipped the industry yep. over on it. Because in the 60s, what did gyms look like? Well, there was a rack of, remember those standardized barbells? It was a 90-pound yeah. barbell. You had a bunch of those things yeah. lined up on the wall. And you had uh, pull-up bars. The little, bars. The, the, you had pull-up bars, the little, the, the, what were the, Swedish the dowels stall. on the wall? Swedish stall bars. Those things. They had those things. They uh, had kettlebells. They kettle, had uh, some Turkish horse. The uh, horse. The, I mean, you, you, Indian clubs, yeah. and I had a, some gymnastic equipment. Yeah. And I might have had a, a little primitive universal leg extension, leg curl. Yeah. And see, I I love some the, barbells. The original and little, universal machines were awesome. You know, of course, I'm looking now. Yeah, we all used them. If I have 20 but, athletes. I could stand there and watch 20, you know, blow. We used to do this workout where 30 seconds you'd do the lift, coach would blow a whistle, you would move to the next station, right. switch, 30 seconds, in that time, then you'd do 30 seconds of this, blow the whistle, <laughs> and you look at You walk around the machine. Yeah, and you look yeah. at that now, it's like, okay, that's miles better than some of the stuff I see. Yeah. Miles better. <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, is it perfect? Is it perfect? Like we talked about this earlier. I mean, you know, it, is there a perfect program? Well, yes, there is. And I'm going to put you on it, and two weeks from now, you'll be saying, wait a sec, that guy over at, you know, Eastern Carolina, he's doing this, like, this with his over. finger up like yeah. that. Why aren't we doing that? Oh, because that's a better program. Because his finger is, <laughs> you know, and so, you know, I learned probably the, one yeah. of the bigger learning experiences in my life was when I started having large numbers of adolescent boys in the weight room. When you start to sink, sink you know, about 65, I think is the most I ever had at once, oh, it will God. open your eyes forever because all of a sudden you'll realize that it's this, it's, it's organizational skills, you know. Yeah, because they're you know, not listening, are they? No, no, no. Not at all? No, no. They're not listening to you? No. They've got other... They have a completely separate agenda. Oh, and if I say, uh, okay, touch your, just touch your left shoe, right? Could, would you just touch it for me? Okay, don't forget, 15 kids just touch the right. 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 And that was a pretty simple instruction. Yeah. Now imagine trying to teach a snatch and clean a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> so you just have not to, physically and possible. So, and so one of, the reasons I one of the things I think I bring to the party is that with those experiences, I learned that not only do I have to have... Uh, this place completely organized. Not only do I have to have a program, but every single thing I do must build on what we did before. Well, and that's how Arthur Jones plugged his deal in, because that solves that problem, doesn't it? Yeah. For the general public, especially. He did it with leg presses. He did. I did it with cleans. Yeah, I'm right. just saying, yeah. But he fit, he fit that level of organization into a commercial model that could be easily sold to the general public, and, and as a result, the fitness industry as we know it today exists. Because yeah. had it stayed like it was, essentially you've got your adolescent boys running around in the gym, yeah. and you're having to micromanage them. Arthur showed us 12 stations, do this in this order, exactly. use this program, and here, buy the equipment from me. Suddenly, we're making money. Suddenly, we're to, and we're not getting anything accomplished, really, but we are getting sales accomplished, and we are giving these people a he product also, that they recognize as non-chaos. I'm going to throw in one more thing that he added. 
safe. S A F E. Yeah, that's very important. Don't forget that Nautilus equipment was safe. See, because right as you went to failure, mm -hmm. you stopped. Right. And the machine, even if something bad happened, the machine would go right back in. It was safe. When I was growing up, there was these machine. It was a machine. It was a. It was like a little washing machine that you would sit in and you'd close the doors, and the guy would turn on the steamer and you. Oh yeah. Yeah, little little, well, little steam room cubicle thing. Yeah, I've seen them. They're not safe. No, no. You can't. Uh, <laughs> you can't get out of it fast enough. Uh, I would bet. Steam rooms and in gyms was a standby. Right. But now they'll have 15 signs. The steam room is unsafe. The barbell is unsafe. Oh my God! The kettlebell. The first thing. Why the it could fall? The first thing a parent sees when I got kids swinging is, isn't that bad for their back? Squats are bad for your knees. The great insight is we're now so safe. Where everything is safe. Yeah. Personally, I I'm not but that way. There's this much eight-point type on a package of hamburger meat. Exactly. You know. But see, he brought it in, and so now you get you know Edna comes in, and the personal trainer, Steve, the trainer, right, is so. Oh, okay, we're gonna work on the treadmill, but I'm gonna monitor your heart while you walk on a treadmill at one mile an hour. <laughs> if you get the damn thing to beat, God bless you, because you don't want to have a heart attack. Oh my God, it's up to 70. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's, but there's a chart on it that says this is I'm 53. This is safe. If I get over 170, 53 minus 220, and then I'm 70 percent of that, I'm going to die. It's not safe above it. Yeah. Right. Is this all true? I think in 30, 40 years, when things, things, you know, the pendulum's going to swing, it's people will laugh about all these things again. Right. You know, uh, everything in the playground is unsafe. So now all their kids play uh, video games at home, and then they get obese. Unintended consequence. It's type 2 diabetes, of course, that's safe. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's safe. I, think, I think we forget sometimes that this little button called safe has done as much to undermine our industry as anything else. And the thing this is, has done as much to undermine our society yeah. as, well, as anything. If we want to talk about broader topics, well, they're not interested in hearing that shit, but we'll talk about that well, tonight. Well, let me add one. I, I will, because my wife saw the second plane go in on 9-11. She was there. She was there. And uh, one of the things that's reminded me of constantly, if you want to talk about safe, you want to talk about safe? Or do you want me to, f w which one do you want? Because I'm sure they went through all, there's the doors, wear your belts. I'm sure they did that all before the planes took off. Sure. But were sure they did. safe on that plane? Safety comes at a high cost, I think. I think. And uh, the other thing, too, is I also, this is something, I, this is my brother Gary, because he taught me this. Most of us now in athletics and academics, and I'm embarrassed to be part of both, have said as a group, <laughs> the high jump bar is at one foot. If you as a child jump over it, you get a gold medal. Now, you're every, a hero. Every one of the kids knows it's bullshit. Right. The only problem is it's the adults who don't. <laughs> and I, my, one of my things I try to do in my yes. athletic career is constantly raise the bar. I'm not, I'm not a jerk, but I, I do think it's important. When guys will question my coaching, one of the things I always tell them is, that's true, but your deadlift isn't as strong as our homecoming queens. I don't try <laughs> to be mean. It's not, it's not a mean thing, except. You know, you you got to be in the mid 300s as a male before you're stronger than our homecoming queen. I'm not being a jerk. No, I'm just saying. No, we've got I little girls in Texas, little girls in the 123s pulling 407 in the state high school meet. So, uh, the state high school powerlifting championships, amazing. and here are people in gyms all over the country who have been told 315 is strong. Strong. They've lowered the bar. Elite, if I can use the elite. word. Elite, hey, elite. Elite. In fact, I'll buy myself a T-shirt that says elite it, on it. it I elite. Can... So, one of the things one of the things I strive for is that let's raise let's raise the bar again. And someone's going to say, "Well, Dan, is that safe? Nothing worthwhile in is, life is, is safe. safe." Here's one. Say I do sometime to somebody in front of a big crowd of people in front of mm -hmm. maybe God and country. Read it, touches the whole day. You, you think you're safe after you say I do? That's when the adventure begins. Right. Uh, you think you're safe, have a baby. It's the most dangerous, scary thing I've ever seen in my life. I'd much rather, honest to God, be in the water with the great white than to watch another birth. I, I feel safer. <laughs> <laughs> they asked me, did, did you? All it, kinds of things can happen in the birthing room, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a good thing. We're fairly certain of our variables with that's, the shark. That's right. right. 
like the the joke. I mean, you know, Tiff didn't take drugs, but I did. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs>